We alive. Mm -mm -mm. <sighs> mm. So ready to have this conversation around consistency in conscious creation. You know that I love some alliteration, so of course I'm going to just be ka, ka, ka. Hello from New York. Hello from the Gold Coast. Anybody that watches this on replay over on IGTV, feel free to drop in the comments below where you are watching from. It's so fun to know that this exists so that we can play in the energetic kind of, but also in the physical through social media. I think that's so fucking awesome. I'm just gonna wait 30 seconds for those who put their notifications on for this live to tune on in. And while we wait, what if your only job right now was to land in your body, to crawl back in? Hey dear Haley. oh, I miss you. Okay, so as we allow everybody to filter in, just crawl back in to your body, your being. Take the biggest breath that you've taken all damn day. Allow yourself to take up space. <sighs> and we're going to be sinking our teeth into a conversation today around the need for consistency in conscious creation. So for those of you that saw my post yesterday, there is something really funky happening with the masculine in the collective right now. Uh, I posted a poll yesterday too and there was about 70 people that agreed with me that they were feeling something going on in the last couple of days. So I, I know that I'm not alone in this shift for craving stability and security and consistency and just all of those qualities that the healthy integrated masculine gives us. Often we're only bombarded with the negative or out of balance or toxic masculine behaviors, which is, you know, hustle and grind and competition, um, greed, violence. Hey, Josh. And all of these qualities that aren't in reverence of the feminine. So what we're going to be talking today around creating consistency in your manifestation process and practice is by cultivating the integrated masculine qualities in you, whether you identify as female, whether you identify as male, it doesn't matter. Gender is irregardless of, of the energies that are at play within you because we all have both and both is also all around us in everything we see at the core of it. The feminine is all of life and the masculine is the undying and unchangeable. So the masculine is consciousness itself, which is just truth. It's just the same all the time. And then feminine is everything around it. Feminine is chaos. Feminine is sex. Feminine is desire. Feminine is movement, right? This is what these energies present themselves in their true form, in their healthy form. So I want to ask everybody that's on here now, what struggles do you have in terms of creating consistent outcomes within your conscious creation practices? I also asked this question a few days ago on stories and had some really interesting results around mostly women wanting the consistency and feeling like these conscious creation practices and principles are a bit airy. They're a bit ethereal. They're a bit up here, right? And we really need to ground them down. Ooh, I'm already getting hot talking about this. It's so fun. So tell me in the comments below, what's the struggle or the resistance that you have around creating consistent results with what you want and your desire? And the message that most wants to come through today around this, as soon as I read some of the comments on my post yesterday and really felt into this message is less about the question and more about the part of you that asks the question. 
So the very need for creating consistent results, valid. But what part of you is actually asking that? Is it unconditional trust? Is it alignment with your inner being? Or is it fear? Is it conditioning? Is it rush or urgency on being on someone else's timeline? Thank you so much for your answers, everybody. I'll read them in just a sec. And so I just want you to tune into that. Who is the one asking for consistency? Can you identify how it feels to be as that when you ask, when you, when you declare the need for consistency? or the frustration or the aggravation or the irritation of wanting a consistent result that you're not getting. Okay, so one of the common threads is trying for months and months to bring something into being and it's not happening. Resistance to structure, uh -huh, I know that. <laughs> The biggest reframe for me that come with bringing structure into my business, because my business has always been such a feminine entity, is the reframe that discipline is freedom. Because to me, discipline was death. And I realized deep down that actually um, it felt more free to be disciplined and committed to something than nothing. That actually felt terrifying to not have any discipline. So that was a really great reframe for me. Pushing through the beginning slow stage and losing motivation or confidence, feeling like you're in rush or urgency, nothing happens and loses the spark and the fire, procrastination due to limiting beliefs. Oh, boom, amazing, such great answers. Oh, fuck, I feel you. I feel you. And I'm just hearing fully the reality of how fucking frustrating it is to not make something manifest when you're so clear and you see it when you're so connected to the desire and the wanting of it and then it's not coming into being so how we create a consistent result is not by placing that power outside of us it's creating consistency with our practice and our feeling now what the fuck does that mean Wanda, you said before, Kristen, around losing the spark, losing the joy because nothing's happening in the external. It's about maintaining the momentum of the desire and evoking the emotion of it despite it not being made manifest in the physical. I'll say that again in a different way. It's feeling first, physical later right? How are you always so on point with what's happening in my life? Because I'm right there with you, Kelpie. <laughs> We're all so connected. So feeling first, physical comes after. If we shift outside of the experience, the emotional experience of what we desire, and we put that pressure on it, making, making it manifest in the physical before it's ready to, or before we are ready to receive it, we're in rush, we're in urgency, we go up into the mind, we go into scarcity, we go into lack, and guess what happens then? We repel all potential of creative energy. Because that's all we're working with, right? It's creative energy. It's, it's, um, it's what we're fucking here to do. You are a creator. But we cock block our creations because we put them on this very linear unintegrated masculine timeline about how long it should take. So circling back to a few of your comments before, this could mean um, manifesting health. If you're experiencing a chronic illness, a condition, maybe even you just want to get fit and experience a new level of vitality, right? The desire is there. You've asked, you've declared it. Abraham Hicks talks a lot about having all of these rocket launches of desire constantly being sent out automatically you don't need to try to desire right it's happening all the time you're making comparisons you're collecting contrast you're like ooh, I want more of that less of that ooh, definitely don't want that this is good more of that 
that is automatic. You don't even need to try. So many of us are focusing on this step one moment of you know, creating the vision boards, writing the intentions, declaring all your core desired feelings, all of these really beautiful things, but then we, fo we put our focus there and we keep asking, asking, asking. Now, if you are speaking, how much of you is listening? Right? So imagine you're in dialogue with life, with these creative forces, and if you're always just asking, where is the openness to receive? You're blocking the channel. So the asking has to subside for a little while and you focus on something else that feels fucking great. While also addressing any of the blocks emotionally that arise with not having it. I've found that some of my most powerful results in conscious creation comes right after the biggest meltdown that I let myself have. It might be teetering on the edge for months and months and I'm like, stay fo focused, be positive. No. You know that I'm the queen of emotional alchemy. If something is there to be worked through, turn toward it. Don't run away from it. All high vibe is a lie. I talk about this in my manifestation course, Alchemist, which is what is launching this week. That's a little sneak, sneak preview for those who are listening. But if you let yourself fully crack open to how it feels to not have it yet, and you move that energy, you'll come to this surprising place of peace where it no longer matters if you have it or not. Does that make sense? For example, I manifest money in <laughs> almost the same way every time. If I have a numerical goal that is set from my healthy masculine to create consistency in my business. There's a number that I like to hit every month to make me feel safe and secure. This is creating consistency in our conscious creation, right? There's a number and if it gets to the end of the month and I haven't yet made that number or generated it or received it, your language is important here. I start to feel that stress, right? The urgency, Ooh, I've only got three days left. Where's the money going to come from? There's, there's nothing I can see. Where, what's going to happen? Do I need to try more? Do I need to hustle more? Unintegrated masculine, right? Trying to seek consistency. All these old, old, old outdated systems of trying to reach and grasp for our result start to rear its head. What I do is kind of play around in that for a little while because I'm human. I'm just like, oh yeah, I'll do this and do that and operate out of action that's coming from scarcity, really, because it's not coming from a place of trust. And what I end up doing is, <laughs> yeah, you got it, surrendering, trusting, and flowing. And what I do is either go have sex, even if it's with myself, go to nature, or turn my phone and MacBook off. I unplug from technology, which is the primary way that I make money, I go to nature and return to the rhythm of earth rather than the rhythm of our society and the matrix we live in. And I move my sexual energy because that's your creative center, right? It might be self-pleasure, it might be with a partner, it doesn't matter. And every fucking time when I come back, the money's landed in my account. I wish I had like the details of all of the times that this has happened so I could riff it off to you. but. Even last week, um, I, or maybe it was two weeks ago, I went to nature for a few hours with a beautiful man and didn't check my phone, didn't really care about what time it was or what's going on. I had thought that morning, oh shit, like that person owes me money, I've got to pay them, so I need money coming in here and there, and who's my next client, what's happening there? And I thought, fuck it, I'm just going. Going into nature, going into connection, turning off my phone. When I got home, I had over $1,000 paid in late fees by a client that I had to be chasing up that all of a sudden paid them. I had a ceremony session booked, completely random from someone I didn't even really know for another couple of hundred dollars. And I had everything that I needed from my next client as she signed the contract so I knew that she'd be starting on the 15th. No shit, this happened in three hours. 
thousands and thousands of dollars found me when I stopped asking and I stopped stressing and I opened the channel to receive. This is how we create consistent results in conscious creation. It doesn't look like what your ego wants it to look like. The part of you that's asking for consistency is the part of you that likely wants to stay in control, right? When I got you to do that a little while ago, how did it feel to be the part of you that's asking for consistency? Yes, right on Steph, totally. When, when we are, <laughs> when we are coming from control, oh, we are not creators, we're controllers, right? There is an element of surrendering to the masculine of consciousness itself that allows what you really want and really desire to come to fruition faster. Yeah, it'll come when you least expect it. Okay, I'm going to ask you this actually. What happens when you're trying to force an orgasm? It's not a great experience, right? You're in your head. You're trying to be in control. It takes the magic away. Sure, it might happen and you might feel okay about it. But then what happens after that, right? It's not as fulfilling. It's not as satisfying. This is what we're constantly doing with manifesting. If we're trying to force the ideal body, we burn out. We stress out. We create more stress hormones in the body so that we don't get the result that we want. If we're trying to force more money in, same thing. It's coming from this energy of like, I don't trust that it'll come without my control. If we relate, you know that I always use sex as a way to come back to this because it's the same center, right? Your creative center, your your money center, your power center. It's all your womb or if you're a man, your hara. And so if you're feeling a disconnect to something that it is that you want and you've been trying and trying and trying and trying and it's not happening let it go what would it feel like just for this moment to let it the fuck go now you might be manifesting something as big as a new house, or a move overseas, a visa. It might be for fertility. It might be something so big and charged with so much conditioning, so much old belief, and so much want that isn't coming from this like deep trusting place, but actually an ego want, because of course, human, you're allowed to want shit, want what you want unapologetically. But because you've wanted it, because you've asked, life has heard. Life is like, I know. I know that's what you want. Again, Abraham Hicks talks about this as having a vibrational escrow where your desire is kind of manifest something that just hasn't come into form yet. It's like you've picked something out of the catalog that you want and life has already delivered it, but it's up to you to let it in. So the wanting is secondary. You've done that. You've done that for lifetimes. You've done that all of your life. You do that all day, every day. You don't need to want anymore. You can fantasize about it and you can play with it and you can set images of what you want as your desktop background. I love that shit. I'm all for that shit. It's how I create things really quickly because I'm a visual person. So know your style, but then let it the fuck go. Who are you without it? And that is the part that I think a lot of conscious creation courses, content, teachers don't address, which is the pain of not having what you want and what it means about you to not have that thing. 
I really feel like um, this might sound a little bit weird, but there really is like a baby coming through strongly here. I don't know who needs to hear that, but like, there's a bubba. <laughs> I hope it's not me. <laughs> but like, there's like, I don't know, there's a very fertile like baby energy that's, that's hanging around and wants to be made manifest. I don't know who that's for, but I just wanted to speak that um, because this feels really like for you to let go of what it is that you want so much that you feel all of the feelings that come with the loss of that until you drop down into the layer of peace. The peace of being okay with exactly where you are. Now I know the immediate response is, how the fuck can I be happy with where I am when I want what I want and it's not here yet? I get it. I get it. But this is the secret source. And this is where all the emotional alchemy practices really come in to support you. Because that energy that arises to the surface through feeling and what some might say negative feeling or negative thoughts is proof that you are closer to manifesting what you want because it's ready to be purged. It's ready to be worked with. So if you want to create more consistent results in your conscious creation practice, feel your fucking feelings. Want what you want unapologetically, but then be courageous enough to let it go and begin developing a relationship with your inner masculine. Again, doesn't matter what gender you identify as, we all have the masculine and the qualities of the masculine are things like strength, stability, discipline, uh, structure, um, providing. So what's a way that you can connect to your masculine? Move stuck, stagnant emotion and surrender the desire, like give it up. I remember one of the most powerful things that um, a friend said to me when I was really, really wanting something, like wanting it so bad. I wanted to fill, I, I wanted to create a retreat, a digital detox retreat in New Zealand. We'd already booked the space. Um, it was a collaborative thing. This was start of 2019 and we didn't have any signups yet. And to me, it was a done deal. I could see it in my vision. I knew it was happening, but the sales weren't coming in. We weren't covering the money that we'd outlaid. And so all this fear comes up, right? Oh my God, I'm a failure. I'm going to fuck it up. I'm not even going to get this done. I'm, I'm a hoax, blah, blah, blah. All that, all the stories that come up. And as they come up, instead of suppressing them down and being like, I've got this because it's not true, this conflicting inner energies then, I opened to it. I went, all right, what does it mean about me if I fuck this up? Oh, feel that. Emotion itself actually only takes 90 seconds of full expression to move through the body. So if you open so fully to it, it's done. It's done in a minute and a half. This is, it's, it's like magic. Oh, I love that, Haley. Falling in love with the masculine energy in me that wants to provide for me and give me safety. Exactly. Exactly. And so what happened in this scenario with creating a retreat where we didn't have the sales, I think it was still even six weeks before it, we had no signups, um, was opening fully to the idea that it wouldn't go ahead and all my worst nightmares about being a failure, feeling it, addressing that. And what prompted that is a friend of mine saying, give up. Just give it up. Not give up as in like, ah, just throw in the towel. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Go watch Netflix. Give up all of the stuff that I'm carrying, all of the stress of needing to fill the spaces, needing to bring the money in, needing to da 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 so that I was good enough, right? Giving that up to source, to life, to whoever, laying it on the altar of life 
So I didn't have to carry it anymore. And then feeling what I needed to feel around it. Guess what the fuck happened? Really quick. We got four signups. We held a retreat. I continued reading my script throughout this whole process. And one of my beautiful and dearest friends who has become a friend through that retreat, Mandy Huser, will tell you that on the final day of that retreat, I read the script that I had written and been reading for months about that experience and that it had come to fruition in an even more magical way than what I could have ever scripted. So this is the magic, right? You're creating consistency through the practices that I share about all the time, scripting, visualization, um, feeling into the feeling. But then you're also addressing the side that you really don't want to look at because that is what's blocking your receivership of the manifestation itself. Does that make sense? <sighs> How's that feeling for everybody? That was such a great rant. I feel so good. <laughs> um, and I'm actually, I'm going to take you along on the reality of, of the consistent conscious creation journey because I am looking for a house right now with my roommates. And so, um, you know, there is, that's a, that's a, a real thing, right? There's a process that I go through every time. And that's also what consistency can be f like for the feminine. It doesn't need to look like this rigid, structured thing. Consistency can be your own flavor of discipline, your own flavor of showing the fuck up. Consistency for me doesn't look like reading my script every day. I go through seasons, right? Sometimes I fuck it off for a few months because it no longer feels good. It's all about how it feels. That is the consistent piece. How does it feel in your body? How does it mm, like resonate in your system when you think about what it is that you want? If it's not feeling good, let it go and address the parts that aren't feeling good instead of dismissing them. <sighs> Love you guys. Thank you so much. Oh, B, I've got so much more evidence. I can't wait to share. <laughs> I do. I need to start sharing all the, all of the wild, the wild, wild alignments and synchronicities that happen in my world because it is pretty fucking awesome. Thank you so much for joining in live. If you have any questions, you can pop them in quickly in the box and I can stick around for a minute and answer them. Um, but for those of you still live, the whole reason why I am kind of talking about this so much is because, like I said, Alchemist is opening again next week for... Actually, is it today? Oh my gosh, it might be today. i got to check my calendar. Oh, how relaxed I am when it comes to launches. So I have a four-week online guided manifesting course. This round includes two live calls. So B, if you're manifesting to work with me one day, this is the most financially accessible way to do that. It's everything. It's the emotional alchemy side, which addresses all of the hard stuff. And then it's also the really playful, juicy, magical, light stuff too. It's a beautiful blend of the feminine and the masculine on how to consciously create your desired outcomes and feel how you want to feel. So stay tuned. I'm going to change the link in my bio today to um, check out the sales page, check out the course how it all feels and I'm going to be doing another Instagram live next week on a different topic. So if you have anything that feels really close to the surface for you after this, then send me a DM and, um, and you can help influence the next live that I do. Okay. So question from Steph. Oh, I adore you, Angel. I'm a bit lost on how to truly connect to my higher masculine. How can I do this? The divine masculine, not the unintegrated. Hmm. <sighs> Firstly, have compassion for the part of you that might not have experienced the divine masculine in a consistent way, especially in your formative years. This is like big, deep shit, guys. We are rewriting what it means to be masculine and feminine, like in this current Oh my God, what's happening here? Um, like what we're in right now with the feminine rising, 
with all of the toxic masculine coming to the surface to be purged, it's fucking gnarly. So my number one invitation for you, Steph, and for everybody that feels the same around not exactly knowing how to connect to your divine masculine is to have compassion for the part of you that longs for it. The part of you that really needs to know what it is and doesn't. The part of you that wishes it could know what it is, but doesn't. Right? Firstly, just offering compassion to that part of the, of the self. Hmm. And then number two is... Hmm. Let me just feel into this for a second. Connecting to your inner integrated masculine. Hmm. Is creating some kind of devotion to the masculine in you, even if you haven't met it. Even if you don't know what it feels like. If it's completely unknown, if you're like, I don't know what the fuck that even is, use the beauty of your feminine, the devotion of your feminine to worship your inner masculine in the same way that, you know, I just, I, I got the image of the Balinese putting their offerings out every day with their incense and they put them out on the steps for the spirits or for the ancestors or for all these different reasons. They're in constant ceremony. So as the feminine, you, how can you worship your masculine without proof of it even being there yet? Purely out of the unconditional love and longing to meet it. (sighs) Thanks, Haley. I did this with a client just the other day. She might still be on this live. Um, And we anchored the masculine into a physical object that she had so that every time she interacted with this object it would anchor her and ground her into the masculine Mm, the moon oh the moon is the masculine in aboriginal spirituality that's so interesting uh in andean shamanism which is what i've um worked with a lot through medicines and through my cacao apprenticeship um, and other mentorships, the the sun, Taita Inti, is, is the father, and the moon, Mama Kia, is the grandmother. So that's so interesting um, that it's flipped. I would love to learn more about that. Yeah, does that let me know? Oh, good. Okay, Steph, thank you. I'm so glad. Um, one way that I do that is by creating structure in my life. That feels like a way that I can honor my inner masculine. And let him come through to provide for me. If that makes sense. It's, it's like a way to for me to say, hey, I really need you because you help me. You provide for me to create and to be in my flow. So thank you. Thank you. Come through. Show me what you want me to do. And then my masculine will be like, all right, I'll turn on. Here we go. You're probably in your inner masculine in an integrated way a lot of the time. And just not recognizing that it's that it's healthy or integrated just yet. But you'll start to you'll start to feel when you tip into the imbalance because it will feel like stress in the system. Whereas the integrated masculine feels very grounded and laser focused and clear. You might be doing the same thing, but the energy is different. Yeah, objects association. It's yeah, game changer. Because then you're using the physical world to help you energetically and emotionally, right? Use what you have. We, we tend to make it so much fucking harder for ourselves. And everything that I teach or share or embody or whatever is about letting it be easy. So, yeah, let it be easy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, beautiful humans. This will be reposted on IGTV and YouTube. If you want to watch back through it, comment along, share it with somebody. And if you're interested in my manifesting course, Alchemist is going to be open for enrollment before the end of the day, I think. Um, Otherwise, over the weekend. (laughs) But it's all ready to go. I've had 60 plus participants in this course before in the last two rounds. And it is so much fun. It will give you 
the practical magic uh, so that you have some very tangible processes to work with. I've got a few guided audios in there. We've got a little bit of content, but the magic really happens on the bonus calls as well, um, which is my favorite thing to do. So if you feel the tug, I would love to have you join me. And until then, have an awesome rest of your day. Go create some magic. And by create, I mean go chill the fuck out and let it come to you. Okay, so much love.